she ever made a way this week. Jeepers. Woo. I'm going to invite Tanya up. Tanya is our, uh, as I promised last night, is our other Reboot student who will give some testimony. Tanya is actually a, a pretty interesting success story. Woo. Say it like that. Let's hear. We want to hear. <laughs> so like last year at this time, she was my only student. And we all thought when we walked into September in our first kind of like inaugural launch, we were going to have this like really easy, soft launch. We would have one student. We'd figure it all out. And then all of a sudden we had like by January, there was four of them, and we were like refiguring it out the whole time. And it was a lot harder than we thought, and it was a lot different than it, we thought. And it, whew, I mean, I know evolution isn't a thing, but it evolved you know, all winter. So um, what I want you to do tonight is I want you to tell people why they would want to be in Reboot. What is, what would be the reasoning behind coming into, into that program? He never prepares me, <laughs> ever. Um, why would you want to be in Reboot? Reboot is a space that you get to stop, you get to rest, um, you get to learn, you get to learn who you are without striving. You get to struggle through being part of community. You get to sit across the table and have tough conversations and know that there's no relational consequence. Mm. Wow. You get to you get to learn what servanthood means. Um, you get a chance to just just be and build a foundation on things that you would never, that you might not think of when you think of building a foundation. Um, yeah, you get, to, you get to grow. You get to have a really safe bubble to grow in, to make mistakes in, to fall flat on your face, and pick yourself back up again. Um, and then you get the opportunities to step out into community and, and practice what you're learning. So yeah, you get a really safe place to just figure out who you are in, in the kingdom. Good answer. Cheapers. <laughs> I, I asked her the question because I didn't know how to answer the question. <laughs> Tanya, Tanya is going to stay with us, actually, and she is gonna, she's taking on a role of program coordinator when she graduates. And she will be our main female leader for our next group of students. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that incredible? Man, what a season. If you guys have other questions about Reboot, we have four students. I hope they're all in the room because it's mandatory. <laughs> so if, you are, if you're a student, stand up. So we have, we have Esther, who you heard of last night. And I'm missing my Thomas. Oh, he's back there. Good. I was going to. Yeah. So we have Thomas, Sir Thomas, and we have Sandy, and we have the Duchess, Esther, and then we have Tanya. And so in all seriousness, if you have questions or you want to, if you want to hear about what their year was like, this was, this was different. This isn't, this isn't school, it's life. It's real discipleship, and it's really messy. And it was a messy year, and we all got through the mess to some health and some wholeness. I mean, jeepers, I could just stand here and boast about all four of these students. I could spend all night just boasting about what the Lord has done in these four. And it's so unique, and it's so individual. And they're all here for different reasons, and, and some of them are staying, and some of them are leaving, and that's, and that's awesome. So if you have 
if you want to hear some bigger testimony, some longer time, just, just grab them for breakfast tomorrow. Grab them for lunch tomorrow. Talk to my coffee shop because they are, they are amped up and ready to tell their story. Let's worship together. Good, good. <laughs> Is it okay? Just before we jump back into worship, Tanya, I just, the Lord just showed me something for you. I just see a mountain. And the top of the mountain is snow-capped, but the sun is shining on it, and it's just glorious at the top of this mountain. just want to encourage you. I feel like he's calling you up this mountain. He's calling you up higher, and the sun is beautiful up there, and it's still and calm. There's no storm. And I just think of the scripture, I lift my eyes up to the mountain, to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from you, Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. So bless you. We love you. We enjoyed meeting you. Yeah. <laughs> I call her my Esther. You know, the Lord is, is preparing her to reign, to reign. Um, we are going to do something before we go into, into full worship mode. We are already worshiping, but we will also want to uh, worship with our um, offerings. But before we do that, um, before we even came to camp, it was a word, an instruction I received from the Lord. I just didn't know when to do it. I had to listen, listen, listen. But tonight is the night. And so what we're going to do is we are going to call Tyler, and I don't know if uh, Lindsay is here, but Tyler on behalf of camp. Because camp is more than just Tyler. Um, you see his face, and he's, you know, he's a visionary. And, but he, so he's going to be representing all of, all of camp. So what we're going to do is we are going to pray for Tyler and, and the camp, the board, the staff, um, the families, and all of that. So team might, might as well come up here. But there is something very specific God told me to do for this camp, for the ground. And that is, and this is where we're going to need the worship team's help, and we're going to need your help. And that is um, to speak and to prophesy and take off any caps of the revival well of this place. And I, I spoke to John Dreger. Now, we, I've been here almost from the beginning of when Rock Lake happened. Our children have grown up here. Um, we have experienced the spirit of the Lord, salvations, miracles, signs and wonders, and it has continued on. And um, I'm not saying that that has stopped, but there's a cap. And John Dreger, um, he, he said, this year there's eight Atesian wells that bust forth in this area wow. that have come forth. So in the natural, it's already speaking. Eight speaks of new beginnings. And so... Whatever, whatever direction God is going to take camp, it's going, to, it's going to go deeper in the word, and it's going to go deeper in signs and wonders and miracles. But that revival, that oasis that God has created here, that's, that cap is going to come off. And there's going, to be, there's going to be a call, a place here that is going to be a safe place, but where you are going to receive amazing Holy Spirit and word download. Is going to be amazing. So that's what we want to do. We want to um, uncap it. So with that, I want you to stand up, and um, we're going to maybe just gonna allow the um, the uh, worship team to get us into a worship mode, kind of like warfare or whatever it is. And then we're going to pray for you guys. We're going to uncap it first, and then we're going to pray for these guys in camp, and then we're going to take the offering. So with that.
Artesian spiritual wells, the revival wells in this place. And we say, uncap. Say it with yeah. me. to the spirit realm and just say yes. be released be released spring up oh well spring up oh well spring up oh well spring up wells of revival spring up come forth come forth come forth come forth come forth to do before we've, we've been feeling the heaviness on our feet and I know for some of you that's just hard to do but I need you to shake that off shake it off shake it off the new come forth go ahead the new come forth the open up the gates open up the gates Lord let the new come forth the new come forth the new come forth the new come forth release 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 the new come forth the new chosen by the Lord in this season to bring in that new and you're going to see it and you're going to see the fruit and you're going to be able to be able to come in and usher that thing in and it's going to give you great joy and it is going to bring forth fruit in your own personal life in your family's life and it's not going to take away from you you are going to bring ushering it in and the God has called you to this Place for this season to bring this in and never again will we say will you thoughts come in there that I am not the one I'm not that one I might be uh, leading everything else but not that one but it is it is you it is you so anybody else want to speak oh, sorry um, I was just thinking um, my experiences in the past and I think one of the caps I know for myself is preconceived ideas the camp started with the working teams, and then Vic and Jeannie had it for so long. And I know uh, some people still may come in and say, why is it not like that? So I just want to declare that the, I want to honor those who've gone before, but shut that door. I shut that door. It is done. It is complete. And I want to open the door and, and declare, this is your time. This is your time. So we release you from preconceived ideas of how it was in the past. And you are free to do exactly what God has for you and run into what he has for you. And it can look completely different. And that's okay. We bless you. We stand with you and we bless you in Jesus' name. We declare the new has come. stepped on the altar it's like it's on fire it's it's burning so I thank you for your sacrifice we thank you for your sacrifice we thank you for your sacrifice we thank you for your sacrifice and I hear expansion and overflow we thank you Lord that you are expanding Rock Lake we thank you for your expanding the family and we thank you for the overflow that will come from the love and from the sacrifice of this family and this community. Amen. 
Yeah, actually, um, you've been on my heart all week. I've been kind of praying for you guys all week because I really saw that the enemy has really launched an attack against you guys to try to get you to quit. And, I've, and the Lord says you can't quit. <laughs> you can't quit. And actually, I feel like the reason the enemy is doing that is because you guys are on the verge of actually stepping into what she said, expansion and more, and God wants to do something. But help is on the way. I feel like you've been tired. But I see God actually positioning angels in this camp yeah. more, like to actually help you guys yes. and to go before you. Yes. And so it would be easier from here on out where it's been tough. So Lord, we just say no to any, any attacks of the enemy on their family, on their minds, on them physically, God. We just say no more. We silence the voice of the enemy that is trying to get them to quit. And all of the thoughts, all of the distractions, God, we just say no more. And we thank you, Father, for breakthrough. We thank you, Lord, for the more that is coming, for all that you're going to do here and pour out, Lord, for they are positioned here in Manitoba for a purpose. And, Lord, we thank you for the wells. We thank you for what you are going to outpour to our province. In Jesus' name. Amen. I just want to just... Um stab the earth and break open and start the breaking open of the revival well and the realm of life and the well of miracles and the well of healing so I just right now stab the ground yeah. Yeah. Amen. let it flow 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 Good. Everybody join in. Join in. Break forth, 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 break forth. Do you hear the ground? Do you hear the ground? Opening up, the river is flowing. When years ago, a prophet came and he handed me a sword. And very often, I've hauled that sword out and I've used it. And I'm seeing the Lord giving the directors of camp, it belongs to the camp. I see the sword. And it's to cut heads off from this day on. I'm not giving you mine. I just got mine. <laughs> but we'll get together. We'll use those swords together. So we bless you. Remember to pray for them. Remember to pray for camp. Remember to pray for the staff. Remember to pray for their families. Remember to pray. Yes. Remember to pray. Thank you. Amen. Just, you know, um, when we clap like that, there's this deep significance to it yeah. and if you do a deep study into that armies would actually sometimes use the clap and under the anointing of the holy spirit it would put fear into the enemy yeah. and it was actually a warfare and i feel like tonight that that's really some of what was happening yeah. that in the spirit this clap was just <laughs> breaking things forth and even the stamping it's all significant in the spirit realm. So just thanks for partnering with us there. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Now this is probably kind of, you know, obvious, but I just decreed double portion. <laughs> double portion. <laughs> Revival. Amen. <laughs> wow. So... I get the job of taking up the offering. Mm -hmm. I remember a guy one time taking up the offering. He said, just reach into your neighbor's pocket, pull their wallet out, and give <laughs> like you've always wanted to give. <laughs> but I wanted, I wanted to share a little something just so you guys really get a feel for this camp and that. Um, Bill nailed something. He says, uh, I don't need any ice. And those of you who were here that night, 
um, you know, with God, I want all Coke. I don't need any ice. I, I, want, I want the real thing, right? And so in, we got introduced to this camp, I think, in 2009, 2008, somewhere around there. And we got to meet Brad, and uh, it was through uh, Ann Clausen. And like-mindedness and that, and, and well, if you heard Ann, she's probably your best billboard that you could possibly have. It's Rock Lake or this, Rock Lake, that. So we came out and we checked out Rock Lake, and we have a little church over in Beausajur, and we have these people, and because I, I want to tell you, this isn't just ice. And, and so I just want to give you a little testimony. We're pastoring this church, and we're loving on people, and we, we have a gal show up, a, a husband and a wife, and she was schizophrenic. She had lost her rights to Manitoba. She had burned her house down. And they lived in isolation because he had become somewhat of a hermit and he became a closet drinker and he was, he was absolutely very difficult to, to be around. He was just a miserable person. And he never was to me, but I heard this from work because I, he worked on one of the colonies and I knew a lot of the guys on the colony and, and I uh, interviewed them afterwards. But we had prayed for this gal. We had seen some breakthrough but we, and, we, and we'd fallen in love with this couple. God, it was a God thing. And we wanted to see them set free. But I had never seen anybody set free from schizophrenia. She had seven voices, yep, and and one of, one of those told her to kill her husband. One of them told her light the house on fire. I mean, and she had all these different voices. They'd find her. They would find her in uh, in in the woods, just lost. And he tells the story of seeing one time he went to visit her in Selkirk, and he sees this person running across the the yard with two big huge guys chasing her they, they tackle this person and they carry this person back and he goes that's his wife so we uh, we had prayed and we would seen some breakthrough and this, this lady wanted to be set free and I gotta be honest with you we as pastors and ministers we had no answers anymore we were like well, we've seen some sort, some freedom, and I really believe that it was demonic, and I believe that God wanted to set him free. And she had heard about Rock Lake, and she told us, I am going to go to Rock Lake, and I'm not coming home until I'm set free. This is in July. And so... She had left for Rock Lake, and we went back to California to visit some family for a while. And we get a phone call. Robin's been set free. When we came home, I could hardly recognize her. And her testimony is phenomenal of what God did. And then if you listen to him, he says, yeah, she got set free, but I got set free. And I don't know if you've ever met Robin and Marvin, but when she walks in the room, Joy walks in the room with her. Freedom walks in the room. She rings in freedom, and I'm thankful for this well. I'm thankful that when I didn't know what to do, God knew what to do. So it's not just a bunch of foo-foo here. So what is that, Daryl? You know what? I like coffee, straight coffee. I don't need foo-foo with my coffee. I just need coffee. Okay? And, and you know what? There's stuff, but that's what happens 
there was always stuff around Jesus and you could get distracted. But if you focus on what God is doing, God is touching hearts and lives here. And so I tell you that to tell you this. If you believe this is a well, if you believe God is moving here and he's doing a work, there's stuff, I, you know what, I'm blessed. I came and I didn't see all this. I hadn't seen what you had done. And I'm, I'm going, yeah. You go, buddy. You are a visionary. This is awesome. So I remember when we were here on May long weekend and we were the frozen chosen because we had heaters going here and we were freezing in here. But you know what? The spirit of, the God, of God was here. And so, you know what, when you give, I want you to know, I just want to be a testimony because, you know, we're like, I don't know, three and a half hours, four hours away. But I want you to know I've seen the power of God move. And, and, and you need to understand something. This is a place where the superheroes aren't going to come, the big names. But God wants to use the nameless, faceless generation here, and he wants to set people free. And the couple that set her free, I can't even remember their names. But you know what? That's not what important it was. That's not what is important. She encountered Jesus here, and she encountered freedom. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And the Spirit of the Lord is here. And so I just want to ask you guys, step up. If you believe, if you believe that God is using this place, and I just want to be a testimony of that he is, then sow into what's going on here. Sow into it. So I don't, do you guys want to just do a song and come up, or do you want to pass the bucket, or... We just leaders. Yeah, you know, we were we're talking about feet tonight, and I just feel like sometimes the warfare that breaks it is just when we get up and we move our feet, like, and we, and I, you know, I just feel like we need to come out of our seats and drop the offering in the bucket tonight, and just as a demonstration, we're marching, we're moving, yeah. we're going forward. There's going to be more robins that are going to come and give freedom in Jesus' name. That's just what I was going to say. Worship team, you just take your, your next 20 minutes and go for it. And then as we're worshiping, just come and drop your offering and your sowing into what God is doing here. Yes? I just want to finish the story. Also, by the way, to finish the story, in 2014, Robin got all of her rights back. She was completely deemed, absolutely set free by the doctors. Amen. So let's rise up and let's give, let's praise the Lord. That's, that's one of the foundations is word and spirit here. Let's praise the Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, we're feeling the river. We're seeing the river flowing right here. And so we're going to sing about the river. We're going to continue to prepare the air. <laughs>
Jesus for the river. <laughs> we just jump into the river. I just see this river flowing. I think Iris, you saw a vision of that too, right? The first evening, Iris saw a vision of, of the river just flowing right here in front of the altar and an open door in the river, right? Oh, in the heavens. <laughs> I was like, okay, let's go through the door in the river. <laughs> So yes, we thank you for that door. And that door, he's calling us higher. He is calling us higher. We're going to skip to the last song. We'll just go to the last one. This, this last song, we've never done. The Lord gave me this song two days before we came to this camp. And I just feel like we just have to release it. And it's, it's, uh, it's about the Lord calling us up higher. And um, it's simple. As I, a flame of fire, and his feet like burnished bronze, his voice like many waters, and his eyes, oh. Sing that again.
To him who has an ear, hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Behold, I am coming soon. I am coming soon. Be ready. Make yourselves ready. Make yourselves ready. Make yourselves ready. Make yourselves ready. I am waiting for my father to say, Time. It is time. I come with a sword of truth. I 
come with a sword of truth, dividing, dividing, separating in my jealousy and in my love. Warrior, rise up. I separate. Warrior, rise up. Warrior, rise up. Warrior, rise up. Shinanana, take heart, be of good courage, do not fear. Shurabakata te nanana, do not fear. Warrior, rise up. Shurabakata te nanana, my people. Warriors, rise up. I am giving you grace. My grace is upon you. My grace is upon you in this season. My grace is upon you. Dealing with the fear. Warriors, rise up. Dealing with the fear. Warriors, fear rise not, up. for I am with you. Pick Even to the end of the age, I am battle. with you, Pick says the Lord sword. of hosts. Go to battle. Pick up your sword. 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 our sword. The word is our sword. We must continue to dive deep, deep, deep into his word. I literally see, I literally see Jesus walking in this room. He is walking in here. He's walking in here. Reach out in faith. Reach out to him and just touch him. Just touch him. Reach out in faith. He's walking by you. He's walking by you. He's right here. He's right here. He's right here. Just by touching him, you are healed. Just by touching him. He's right here. Jesus is here.
join with the angels and the elders who are around your throne right now just declaring you are holy. We say holy. You are holy. want to give a little bit more time. This is important to minister to him right now. You know, often we come and we we come because we have needs met or we want to hear the speaker met, but right now we're ministering to the King of Kings. So just take time. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Jesus, we love you. And Jesus is walking into the room. It's where you need to reach out to touch him. And he's going to release that, di- that inner being, that inner hunger, and that inner struggle, that inner addiction. It's time. It's time. This is the place. There is a spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ here. Just reach out to touch him. That's what Anna was talking about. That's what was overwhelming her. Reach out and touch. Receive. You you have to receive. You have to reach out to receive him. He's here. He's here. Sing it to him again. To the only one who's worthy. Worthy. To the only one who's holy. To the only one who's worthy. Seated on the throne. If you can stand. Let's minister to him. Let's sing this to him. To the only you are worthy.
You know, we're just we're gonna go just a minute or two more. How, how many of you um, have tongues, but it's just kind of dried up? <laughs> just anybody? Just right now, I feel like activate it. Just right now, I reactivate the spiritual language. <laughs> I reactivate, reactivate. Yaraba siti yaraba sata taraba tarat. Heraba rana makota rama kariandarat. Yera sharianda taborianda raba kurianda. Rama sarondo raba sarondo raba ka. Yaraba siri yaraba shakoto toko. Yata baka yete sheke he he he. Yeta baha shaha ha shata ha sha. Yeta ha shaha shata ha. There's fresh fire coming on some of you right now. As we minister to him, he's now responding back, touching the desires of your heart. And some of you said, I want more. I want to be refreshed. I want to be renewed. And it's happening right now. He is pouring out a fresh, fresh unction of his spirit. <laughs> Fire, fire, wow. <laughs> How many of you are feeling just a fresh? Freshness, that's the only way I know to describe it. Whoa, 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 okay. Thank you, Lord. Just take a half a minute more, close your eyes again, and just imagine him standing in front of you, and just, again, thank him. Tell him you love him, whatever you want to say to him. But Oh, Jesus, you are welcome. Jesus, we open the door. Does any of the rest of the team have something? I don't know. Anybody? Amen. Oh, you may be.
be seated. Oh man, I don't want to stop. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Gus. Wow. I just want to pray for Todd and Melanie and Simeon and Anna. You guys, we can't say thank you enough for just leading us to him. And they have to go tonight. Um, there's been a death in the family. And so we want to pray. Lord, we pray for them. Comfort. Was she a believer? Not sure. Okay. But we pray for the gospel to go forth. On the day that they say goodbye and just however you want to arrange that, you do that, Lord. We pray protection for them as they travel home. We pray for, for refreshing for them, Lord. And we just pray, um, comfort the family. Comfort the whole family in this time, Lord. And we give this to you in Jesus' name. Amen. You guys, thank you. Wow. Wow. Boy, it's... You're almost afraid to speak or talk when that kind of presence comes. Um, wow. <laughs> um, I don't know if there's a music stand I can borrow. I'm not, I'm not great with tables. <clears throat> Thank you, Father. Shirley, was there anything else you wanted to say? Okay. You know what? I, I just feel we need to take a couple more minutes and love on him. <laughs> just love on him. Just love on him. Again, just close your eyes. Tell him. Tell him, oh, Jesus. You are so great. Even imagine giving him a hug right now. <laughs> we just, we love you. We love you, Lord. We love you. Love you. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Is there someone here? with a life and death issue? Okay. <laughs> Can you feel it? So we speak life, Murray. We speak life, life to you right now. We break off the assignment of death, of sickness, infirmity. And in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, be healed. Usha, <laughs> healing right now into this body. More, I, um, we speak life to the organs, to the kidneys, to the bladder, the liver, to the heart. Go ahead and pray, you guys. If you're feeling something right there, go ahead. Restoration of the organs. What are you feeling, Murray? You feel you feeling anything right now? I just feel an incredible peace. And I speak that to your mind. I just pray 
Give me your mind, your protection, and peace to guide you. Wow, good. He just said he just felt um, a vision of Jesus touching his heart. So we speak to that heart. Wholeness in Jesus' name. And I want to pray that you'll be able to take the testimony all over of the healing cross of Christ. Amen. Amen. How many of you were kind of um, uneasy with? <laughs> it's okay. Um, it was the Lord, and and um, He's actually taking us all into deeper, higher levels that we're all having to get used to. So it's all good. Thank you guys for praying for my wife. Did you feel something? <laughs> Was I not talking loud enough? I'm done, though. <laughs> Let's go for it. Accessibility. He made himself accessible. He wants to spend time with us. And, and I don't know if you caught the first part, but it was like the Lord was telling me, there are some in this room who don't know what to do with my presence. It's like when they saw me transfigured. And Peter felt awkward, and he said, Lord, can I build a, a tabernacle for you? Can I build a tent? Because he didn't know what to do with what he had seen. But the Lord said, I came to be accessible. I am a close God, a near God. I came close to you. Don't be afraid to come close to me. Yeah. He is accessible. That's good. Thank you, Lord. Wow. I, I just still feel his goodness. <laughs> I don't care if we spend all night just enjoying him. I think that could be the best ministry of all time. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, Jesus, we're going to go into your word. And I am just so grateful we're here. Forgive us when we've not taken time to just love on you. And it's not about a song or it's not even, but it's just from our hearts. We love on you. And I want to declare you are worth every second we ever give to you. The worship and the honor and the glory you deserve. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. What time is it?
What's that? <laughs> okay, all right. I, I kind of want to follow up with uh, what's been shared the last few days on this reconciliation. And I want to, I just want to tell stories to us tonight of how God wants to reconcile. <clears throat> and I think sometimes we get into prophetic meetings and like these are wonderful. But Vicenza said there's a cost. And I want to, if you, you don't hear anything else from me tonight, hear this. If the prophetic movement doesn't lead to winning people for Jesus and reconciling to him, it's lost its direction. And I'm convinced the more we get in his presence, he will start to give us his heart for people. Absolutely convinced of that. And, you know, we all go on this journey of the prophetic, and I think God has to weed out the wrong motivation of our heart. You know, sometimes it's, we see prophetic people up front and everybody goes, wow, wow, they're amazing. And I want to be like that, right? And then you actually go out and you start doing it and you get rejected. And, you know, get wounded, all that kind of stuff. And the tendency then is to hide away, right? The porch church was mean to me. They're mean to me. Nobody loves me. I'm going home, you know, kind of thing. Um, it reveals our hearts. And I am convinced that if you see a true prophetic movement, it will always be giving its life for others. Even when they've been in pain and rejected. So let me tell you my journey on some of this. So, this is my wife, Leslie, and we have Harvest Family Ministries. This is Ray. To every one of you who said your wife is beautiful, I totally agree today. <laughs> that was you? Okay. All right. You can see her after. <laughs> um, so we travel f full time, and we work with Shirley and um, <clears throat> Dave and Elf and Bill and Mary Ann. Mark and Tracy and Iris and Vicenza, and we work with lots of people around the province. Our heart is simply this, to encourage the body of Christ and strengthen them, which is what I think you said the prophetic is today. Um, <clears throat> but you got to put practical wheels on that. And I think one of the weaknesses of the prophetic movement is that we don't have practical things to walk out the prophetic word that God drops in our midst. So part of our passion is to start equipping the body, take prophetic words, start doing some practical steps, and walk this out so that it will be fulfilled. And, uh, <clears throat> and so uh, along the way, I've really learned that God's passion is for me to use my gift to bring people to him and see them whole and well. So um, we came from Saskatchewan, 1984, we set out to be youth pastors, and we wound up in a church in the north end of Winnipeg. How many of you know what the north end's all about? We're shocked when we, we hear people from Manitoba say, we're not going to the north end, it's too dangerous, right? <laughs> um, but we, we wound up ministering there. After a few years of being the youth pastor, there was lots of change of pastors, and I wound up becoming senior pastor. <clears throat> And I was, it was a bit overwhelming, just all the stuff that happened. Anyways, I'm sitting in A&W, and there's a pastor friend that we, we prayed for the North End, and he sat down, and he says, like, hey, man, I can't stay too long. And we talked for a bit, and he says, hey, just before I go, I felt that, like the Lord said he, he wants you to answer this question, why are you here? And uh, it's interesting, Erwin Wilson who's a pastor that I just attended his funeral. He's a First Nation guy. 
Uh, he was passionate about this in people's lives, and he would ask all the young people he mentored and counseled, he said, there's two important days in your life. One of them is the day you were born, and the second day is when you find out why. And I'm going to help you find your why. And that's really true, isn't it? And he said, why are you here? And then he said, I've got to go. And I sat there and I thought, why am I here? Because we were even in pain with so much of the stuff that had happened. And I heard the Lord just clearly say, Randy, if you want, I want the North End to be your mission field. And I will be your son in it. And I came home and I told her, and I said, from now on, we're going to reach the North End. So that just became our total thing. So as we began to pray for the North End, and as we began to really pray for revival, how many of you have prayed for revival, right? And revival is wonderful if you read the history books. <laughs> And you kind of get expectation, oh, when the Holy Spirit comes, just everybody's going to turn and all the crime's going to leave and all the evil's going to go, right? And uh, <clears throat> anyways, that's how I perceived that it was going to happen as we started leading our church and we even joined some other pastors in praying for revival. And then the Lord starts showing us the people in the North End, and a lot of them are aboriginal. And I s started realizing, well, if we want the North End to get saved, we got to touch them, right? So I'm starting to look for Aboriginal people that the Lord can connect me with. It's interesting. It was even in the history of our church in revival that we reached a lot of the reserves. But anyways, um, and so I started connecting with some Aboriginal people, and this is what I found out. 80% of the people in Stony Mountain Prison um, are Aboriginals. Most of the murders in Manitoba are Aboriginal to Aboriginal. The suicide epidemic is still rampant on the reserves. If anything still breaks my heart is all the young people that have taken their lives. I'll stop it. And, and I suddenly I'm moved by how do we help this, right? How do, we, how do we get in there with the prophetic? And, and so I think, you know, it's just do we go in there and we just start prophesying and stuff like that? They said, no. No, you need to get connected with us and get involved with us. <coughs> and and I'm, I'm really short on everything, right? <laughs> um, so I said, okay, I'm going to do that. So I started saying, Lord, who do you want me to connect with that would be influential in our Aboriginal community? And God even sent an Aboriginal couple to pastor in our church, and eventually we set up an Aboriginal church in our church. Um, and they taught me an awful lot. Um, but he led me to this couple, Irwin and Dolly Wilson. And someone said, you need to go and connect with Irwin and Dolly because they want to set a house of prayer up in Winnipeg. And I was part of um, the city-wide prayer movement and, and leadership there. And I thought, okay, that's, that's excellent. That's what I was looking for. So I actually met them at a conference in Alberta. And I walked up to Dolly and I said, hi, I'm Randy Wengel. And I was given your name, and I'd like to talk to you. And she, she goes, get away from me, and you stay away from me. And she's backing away. She says, I mean it. Don't you come near me. And she walked away. And I was with Rob Parker from the House of Prayer, and I said, do I have bad breath or something? <laughs> like, like I, I was shocked by that. So I thought, oh, well, that was weird. But we're at the conference, and then I see her again. And I go over there, and I say, look, I, I'm sorry if I offended you. She says, I told you, stay away from me. Now get away from me, and don't come near me again. And I'm going, this isn't a great start. <laughs> so 
So it was probably an hour later, we're in the food lineup, and she's with her husband, Erwin. And I walk over there, and she walks away. And he goes, you need to know she hates white men, and she's terrified of them. And you got in her space. And, you know, don't be hurt by that. But, you know, we're just not ready to talk to you right now. So <clears throat> I was hurt. Like, and, uh, you know, what went through my mind was, well, if you don't need me, I don't need you. That was some of the thoughts that went through my head. But guess what happens when you get before the Lord? Who will go to these people? And he literally said, I want you to go and reach out to them again. And I want you to love on them. So we did a bunch of things to start doing that. And one of the big things that broke the thing. So here's, here's where I'm talking the practical stuff, right? We need to get out of the event mindset and the program mindset and move into relationship, right? So we invited them for supper, Ruth Wall, Keith Myers, and Leslie and I. And we said, we just want to get to know you. They drove around the block four times to work up the courage to come in. And, and she kept saying, they're just going to mock us in our thoughts. But, but that didn't happen. We loved on them and something broke that. We had to do that with other Aboriginal leaders. But we just went in and we loved on them. And... and ate with them. <laughs> I can tell you other stories. We, we, we invited the one group to come to our church to minister. See, I'm still a bit naive. Hey, guys, come. Bring your worship team. Come preach. The same thing happened. And um, the worship team didn't show. Like, they're supposed to do the morning service. They didn't show. And the speaker came in like half an hour late. And and I said, where's the worship team? And he goes, um, they're not coming. They're afraid you guys are going to laugh at them. I said, are you serious? I was really upset. My leadership was upset at me. <laughs> and, and so I'm cutting them off. That's it. Done. And same thing. I want you to go have dinner with them. I want you to continue loving on them, right? So uh, so we did those things, and here's, here's all I want to say is we wound up becoming good friends and family. And here's the thing. As we start working together, territory's being taken because the body's coming together. The walls of division are coming down. There's a unity and an authority to start breaking the demonic stronghold over Manitoba. And one of the main spirits over Manitoba is witchcraft. And, uh, you know, we can kind of go into that tonight. But I want to say this. Some of the most God-powerful moments in the last journey and you know, years of the journey of my life were with the aboriginals. And absolute miracles, signs, and wonders took place. And in regards to Manitoba. Just let me tell you one real quick. So we became good friends and we started working together. And, and it became a partnership. It wasn't like I have all the answers, you have all the answers. We're going to do this together. Like that really became the mindset. That brought them incredible healing. But it brought me understanding of how to walk with them, right? And quite often as a white man, we had the answers and we were superior to folk and we had to break that so anyways we we wanted to bring healing for all the crime and corruption that had come up the red river um, from the settlers and from the early pioneers and had broken treaties and that and we actually set a day at the forks and 
the Aboriginal leaders said, would you walk with us on this? And we said, sure. And, and it was. It was really a God-led thing. God so affirmed this thing. And, but here's the thing. The battle really comes again to stop any kind of healing that's going to take place in the province. And, and here's where we start strengthening each other. They were going to quit. The Aboriginal leaders were going to quit because part of what they wanted was a government leader to come and be part of doing the prophetic exercise of broken treaties and the evil that had come and repent for it. And we would all be in unity on this. And they could not find one MP in Manitoba. Not even the Aboriginals would come. And they, they phoned me and said, we, we're going to quit, but we want you to pray. And so Keith and Ruth and I and others, we all prayed. And we all said, you know what? You're not supposed to cancel this thing. You need to go ahead with it. And they said, okay, all right, but you've got to walk with us, right? So we went through the day. And he was still a little disappointed that we were going to go down to the river, do this exercise of this prophetic act. And uh, he said, so it's time to go down. We were in the hotel. We went down to the water, and we're just about to do this prophetic act. And all of a sudden, this aboriginal young man comes running down the path, and he goes, the governor general's coming. The governor general's coming. And I turned to Roger Armbruster and I said, who's our lieutenant governor? And he said, no, no, the governor general, Mikhail Jean, is coming. And we look up and here's Mikhail Jean coming down the path, four security guards, and she's walking towards us. And he, now, get the timing of this, right? We were praying for broken treaties and that kind of thing. She comes down and she goes, this young man came to me and said, you guys are doing something for the healing of his people. I will do anything I can to see people healed. We just signed a, tr uh, a, a settlement for the broken treaty at Pegasus Reserve. So what do you want me to do here? Tell me and I'll do it. And Raymond McClure, now she is higher than the prime minister. You want to talk about a government official coming. Who could organize that, right? And so Raymond McLean and Ruth Wall linked arms with our governor general, walked down to the water. She threw some stones of healing in the water, and she said, you pray, and I will agree with you. It's, it's unbelievable. We were talking after those saying, it wouldn't have happened if we weren't walking together like we, we used to. Right? There, I have so many stories like that with them that are just beyond supernatural. And, and so, but here's the thing. Here's the thing that really blessed me about um, Battle for Canada. So, for, so that's 25, over 25 years ago we started. For years we were praying, Lord, raise up the Aboriginal leaders. Raise up the Métis leaders. Raise up the Inuit leaders. By the way, one of our services with them, I didn't know this, but the Inuit hated the Aboriginals and the Métis. The Métis hated the Aboriginals and the Inuit. And they were at war. And at one of our major gatherings, one of the Inuit went up and said, it's time for peace, and I'm repenting to the Aboriginals and the Métis across Canada, and I'm asking for forgiveness, and I want to declare we will be brothers with you. And, and there's just so much I'm leaving out, but the thing for Battle for Canada was, guess who was leading the whole event? Métis Aboriginal people. And, and it wasn't like we... There wasn't a distinction. There was all kinds of other leaders working with them, but, but it was like the family. How many of you kind of know what I'm saying? Like it was just, it was like, yeah, this is good. We're all here. But that, that how many years have others just labored at this, but we're, breakthrough is coming. But it will take practical giving your life relationally to whoever the Lord calls you to. So then the next group was biker and gang members. I won't even tell you that one, but we, that was a miracle. We wound up um, starting a biker gang church. Um, 
Yeah, just, I, I'll tell you, I need to tell this story because we brought in Alain Caron from Quebec who has a revelation of the apostolic prophetic that is really a new wineskin and, and he's speaking all over the world and we, we felt to bring him into Winnipeg, so we did. This is about 10 years ago. And, and uh, he spoke the first night great and he stayed at our house and I, I said to him, how did you sleep? And he said, terrible. He said, I felt like there was a guy choking me all night. I could hardly breathe. He said, it was just a battle the whole night. And I said, well, we, we need to get the people to pray um, at the session this morning. And so we went there and he spoke the first session and then I said, hey guys, um, at the end of his session, I said, we're going to pray for him. Here's what happened last night. He had a demonic attack. And um, we need to break it. Guess who was in the, the midst? Irwin and Dolly. And Dolly stands up and said, I'm supposed to break it off of him. Now, here's, here's the crazy thing. She, like, like she came up, her and Irwin came up, and they broke the thing off of him. And Elaine says, wow. He says, you don't know this, but in Haiti, three months ago, we were ministering in Haiti. A pro prophetess came up to me and said, there is a spiritual assignment against you of witchcraft and the demonic, and it wants to silence you, but there will be a First Nation couple in Canada that will pray over you and break the power of witchcraft. That's unbelievable, isn't it? Now, here's the crazy thing. When he flew to Winnipeg, there was a warlock sitting in his plane in Ottawa, in, in his seat on the plane that they had kicked out of their church three years previous. And he had to ask the warlock to move. And uh, so he knew already there was this assignment. So that was broken. Um, just... Last year, he was ministering in Taiwan to 900 pastors. And he told this story. He says, I tell this story all over the world, wherever it goes. And he said, uh, some of the leaders there felt like it wasn't totally completed, and they prayed again over him in t Taiwan. That day, the warlock died. But it was an Aboriginal couple. Like... So do you see how the Lord is the Lord is reconciling us? He's doing things like this where we need each other. And so as we continue to push in the prophetic, I really believe that um, we'll have to pay a price. Vicenza, what you talked about, where's Vicenza? We'll have to pay a price. We're going to face rejection. We're going to have to with the love of God, not quit, not back down. How many of you have this temptation to quit whenever the junk happens with the prophetic, right? <laughs> you know, especially the wound in your heart. But see, if we're true prophetic, we, we get in his presence and his love won't let us go. It won't, and it won't let people go. And so... Come, Lord Jesus, come. And he does. And he says, but who will go to these people? Because they're dying. Their children are committing suicide. They're murdering each other. Poverty is destroying them. Who's going to go, right? And it's going to pay a price to do it. So this has happened time and time again. And this is even where I think the apostolic comes in. The apostolic can bring that practical thing. And I like how Elaine Caron shared it, the lion and the eagle flying together. And it's, Todd actually did a, a graphic design of that that's powerful. But he said, the prophetic go deeper and higher and the apostolic go further. How many of you want suicides to stop in Manitoba, especially my of it? How many of you want our young people? I'm tired. The enemy is stealing our young people at an alarming rate. And I, I want to end with that quickly, but um, so we go deeper in Father. So even the French, the same thing happened where, you know, do you guys remember the when they were going to separate there in the, the 90s? So 
How many of you watching the TV said, if you want to go, go? I did. Go on, get out of here, right? So guess what happens right after that? I get a phone call. Randy, there's a French pastor coming from Quebec, and, and we told him that you'd be open for him to speak in your church. <laughs> yeah. And they said, you'll like him. He's just a gentle father. Yeah, okay, all right. I'm doing it because I know you guys. So he, he comes and he, we talk, and it's, it's all good, but he starts speaking, and he goes, I did not want to come to English Canada. He said, I, I hated the English. And he said, I, I just kept telling the Lord they're going to just make fun of me. The same, same kind of thing, right? They're going to mock me. And he actually fought for a year with the Lord before he finally came. So he said that. He said, I didn't want to come, but he said, the Lord has told me to come to Quebec. So he just broke down and died. He said, if you, English Church of Canada, reject us, we have no hope. Because France has rejected us, and we are not France. He said, we have only 300 evangelical churches in Quebec with an average attendance of 40 to 60 people. We have the highest suicide rate in the world. We are one of the most heathen people groups in the world. We have the highest abortion rate in the world. Alcoholism, we are dying. And if you reject us, we have no hope. Guess who's on his face on the floor? And I had to repent. So now I say to him, how can I serve you? What can we do to help you? And we wound up going to Quebec with teams for years. Just anything we could do to strengthen their cause. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And if it meant just painting the church, we did that. But all we did is we held up their hands and we said, don't give up. Fight the good fight. Preach the gospel. We're with you. And guess what? They broke through. When I first went to that little church, it was 50 people. Elaine wasn't even the pastor. We became good friends, though. He now is an apostolic leader sh uh, sharing the revelation of the new wineskin all over the world. <laughs> he sits on the council of apostolic leaders internationally. And, and something's happening in Quebec. And it's breaking through. But they will tell you it's because the English church joined hands with them. See, this is where the prophetic will go. If, if, and even in our individual lives, it'll be our neighbor, right? He'll lead you to your neighbor who's dying. <laughs> so, so here, here's what I want to end with. I could just share lots more on how God so keeps asking you to get healed up if you need it, but not to walk in rejection, not to walk in, well, they didn't recognize my gift. Don't walk in that stuff. Just walk in the love of Jesus that came in the room tonight and say, who do you want me to set free? Who do you want me to share the good news with? Who do you want me to love on? Show me. And he's waiting for the church to come alive. And this crazy world is so bringing many things to distract. But, but I say, let's rise up. I declare, I want to declare the prophetic will rise up in Manitoba. And what they're going to be known for is their love. Amen. Their love. Yes. And sending the captives free. And their unity. And the family. And, you know. So... 
we talked this morning how um, we want substance, right? I think this is some of the substance. Is there a Kleenex around? <sighs> On the floor? I'm <laughs> oh, I just use my hand now. <laughs> Like substance. See, and, and that's why if we just keep this an event-oriented thing inside of a building and we have a great presence of God come, but, we, but it isn't moved out practically, we're missing it. And I can just guarantee you, if you want to be stirred individually, you will change your world wherever you go. So we're deliberate, we are deliberately asking the Lord for neighbors. We're bringing them over for supper. We're just fellowshipping with them. I'm learning, I got to, I almost talked too much about spiritual things the other night. And they kind of were looking at me after a while. But anyways, <laughs> but, but we're going to, we're going to reach them. <laughs> we're going to put wheels on this. So here's the last thing that I felt was important as we even said, the younger generation is looking for substance. Fateen came and did an equipping. Fateen Grisicki, who, how many of you know who Fateen is? She's a great leader in our nation for the church and equipping them and, and giving them insights and stuff. And she's led incredible prayer movements in Ottawa, 10,000 people gathering for prayer. Um, but she, she did a training for us in January and then we had asked her, if you have a word for Manitoba, would, you know, feel free to bring it. So she did. And she brought a number of things. But this is one of the things that I, I really feel before the Lord. I want to keep before us as a prophetic leadership. But, but I want to keep it before Manitoba. And this is what she said. And I felt the Lord would say he's really going to raise up and use the container of the marketplace that's not it. Sorry, wrong. I started the wrong verse. I felt the Lord saying this season in Manitoba and across the board, but I felt for you guys to intentionally invest in the next generation. I felt the Lord would say that those who invest in Gen Z are very, very wise in this season. There are those that God is raising up, that he wants to raise up, that if we will bring them to the table... There's the practical step, right? That if we will go out and find them, and I, I, we've been talking about this for a while, but you know what? So we don't invite them to our events. We go and find them. What did Jesus do? Everybody said, come on to the temple. You should be preaching and doing miracles at the temple. You should be. And what's he doing? He's, he's going out to a bunch of fishermen. And to this thief sitting at a table, tax collector. Why? Because <laughs> God knew their hearts, right? I actually believe we need to go and find the younger generation. But we need to be intentional about this. And God may give each one of you a strategy of that, but, but I'm becoming very intentional of going after them and finding them. I met with one young lady who we're kind of mentoring. And, and I said, um, is there others who would want this? And she goes, oh, yeah. And I said, well, write their names down. And like I'm thinking three or four. She was on name 26. I'm serious. And I said, stop. Like, there's no way I can mentor 26 people. <laughs> and she said, they're all not in church, but they're wanting to grow in the Lord and the prophetic. So we go where they are. We go find them. Um, if you will go out and find them, if you will go into the harvest fields. So what was Battle for Canada all about? The harvest. If you will go out into the harvest fields of the universities and the schools and intentionally invest into our youth ministries wherever it is, just reaching out to those young people at the bus stop, wherever we interface, there is a hand of the Lord that's coming on Gen Z, and I heard the Lord say very, very clearly, whenever you hear the very, very, you pay attention, right? You probably heard this. 
you are very wise. You are very wise in this season to invest into the leadership of them and the harvest. I feel so strongly there that this sense that the future of Manitoba lies in doing this. How many of you love Manitoba? <laughs> I want to see the breakthrough. So I'm going to leave us with that. But can we put practical wheels on this? As, and many of you are. I, I, I don't want to be, but maybe the big, the big change I feel is going to happen is we're not going to focus on our buildings and our programs. <laughs> We're just going to start gathering his family, and we're going to do what we did tonight. We're going to get in his presence. Mm -hmm. We're going to get healed up. I'm not against buildings, and I'm not against programs. And, but wherever they become our idols and hold us back, we need to reevaluate. But I'm just convinced it's going to be a change. And if this persecution comes, how many of you kind of feel like it's, it's already happening, right? It might get worse. If it does, if they come and they drive us out of our buildings, out of that, we've got Jesus in each other. <laughs> and I think we'll become more alive than we ever desired to be. But I really want to appeal on this last one. How many of you would love to see our young people come into their destiny?